Welcome back friends to a beautiful fall day on the homestead. So I haven't put up videos for a couple days. We actually took the weekend off and we headed over to the sand dunes on the, on the Oregon coast down in Florence uh, with some friends and um, a bunch of kids and dirt biking in the sand. And we had a, had a lot of fun doing that. Kind of the last, uh, last hurrah before winter really comes in. Um, in full effect, I guess. So today we're gonna to be stenciling cans. So uh, as I said in the previous video, working on our fuel plan, our, our preparedness survival plan, uh, storing diesel, gas, kerosene, that sort of thing. Uh, the green cans, I've got two of them. I've decided to, to use those for a uh, mix. So it'd be a 50 to one mix for all of the power saws, all the two stroke engines. And granddad always uh, silver stenciled all of his cans. So you could quickly look at it and not make a mistake. It's getting pretty cold up here. I think we woke up this morning and it was 27 degrees at about uh, five o'clock. So you don't want to paint stuff if it's too cold. Um, if you look at your paint cans, you'll see they have a recommended temperature deal on there. So I just got these guys by the wood stove here and, uh, and the paint warmed this up a little bit. We gotta get these stickers off and then we'll uh, degrease it. I've always liked the military style stenciling. Uh, Granddad used to stencil all of his cans and he would, uh, uh, he had these ammo boxes and he would you know, put what was inside, you know, hunting tent and wood stove and stuff. I always, I always thought that was cool. Now these are little guys, these are just one inch. I don't have any that small. Um, but I got, I've got these four inches here, which I typically use. These are a little bit big. I actually, I got these for the uh, uh, yard markers on the shooting range, but these will work just fine. You can make your own. You can print this stuff out and you don't know, cut it out with an X-Acto knife, but that takes a lot of time. And, and, you, and if you don't have the right paper, it falls apart. These you can reuse. You can see these guys here. I've, I've used these many times right here. So we're just gonna do uh, the four inch, uh, the mix on here. And so what you'll need is some paint, just get a contrasting color, um, stick with whatever you want, you know, white or silver. And what, to get the best results that, that I have found uh, is if you tape these together kind of as one unit, boy, this old masking tape, they don't, it doesn't hold up very, it doesn't last very long. It's like you buy, you buy the stuff for a painting, um, a painting job in the house and then pretty soon you know, it sits for six months and then it doesn't want to come undone. These jerry cans have got a lot of big stickers on them here. So these stickers, yeah, you see there, it's just the worst. That's that, that sticker with the adhesive that uh, sticks on the can and then you're forever cleaning it off. It leaves that sticky residue and then that gathers dirt. I was hoping that heating them up by the wood stove would uh, free that up, but it didn't. Those are some mean old stickers. That didn't uh, work as well as it typically does. I don't like that sticky on there. It just gets all dirty. I'll put a little uh, carburetor cleaner on there. I'll clean that right off. Maybe a little bit of gasoline if you don't have this. Don't forget to degrease that metal. I just uh, wiped it down real quick with some thinner. Now that's gonna be hard to mess that up, huh? A giant mix logo. Even an East Coast guy can understand that. Okay, so we'll tape this into place so it doesn't move. Square it there. Hard to get any reference points on these cans. They're also round, but uh, oh, it's doesn't really matter, I guess, all that much. You don't want a bunch of overspray on everything. A paint job is only as good as the prep work. For the paint, I'm just using a, just a high quality white, a high gloss. I like the high gloss on there. Now, when you're doing the stencils, it's never gonna be perfect, especially when we got voids in there. It's gonna, you know, it's nice to have those crisp, clean edges on there, but um, when you have an uneven surface, it's not really possible. What, the one thing you can do is make sure you, you maintain that distance and try to shoot straight at a, you know, at a 90 degree angle from there, not be spraying like that. And of course, obviously, and getting spray under there. And um, we'll get a couple coats, so I'll just uh, try, to, try to be even and just follow the contour. You can practice, follow the contour of that can. I'm 
This should be dry enough now we can take the stencils off. I like the frog tape. The frog tape doesn't leave a sticky residue. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted there. Pretty clear. As soon as you're done with those stencils, if you get that tape off when the paint is still kind of wet, um, you can reuse them. What I found that if you leave the, let the paint dry with the tape on there, um, it, it tears the paper and pretty much ruins the stencil. So we'll get that off there carefully. It takes, it takes a little bit of the cardboard off there, but you know what I should have did, I knew better was to use the green tape on the stencil, then it wouldn't be sticking and running the chance of tearing it. I'll show you the best way that I found to mix a two-stroke oil. This is a, a ratio right. This is the handiest little thing you'll ever, ever have. Uh, I've shared this before, but you'll see on the top, it'll say 2.52. That's the size of your gas can. And then this is the ratio that you want, anywhere from um, you know, 20 to one, 16 to one, down to 70 to one. So when you're mixing, so th we're gonna put five gallons in these cans, right? So this is 2.5, that's the highest. So at, if we want 50 to one, which we're gonna run our saws here, uh, we fill it to this mark right there. Now don't forget, if you're putting this in five gallon can, you gotta do it twice. <laughs> so <laughs> if you do it once, you know, you'll only be 25 to one. But a little bit of insurance if you want it. This Amsoil Synthetic Two Stroke here, the Sabre, I've been using this on the dirt bike and I've actually, I actually called Amsoil and had a, a very interesting conversation with them about this stuff. They claim uh, that you can run this at 100 to one uh, and, on, and safely on all engines uh, that they show on the back. And they include steel and Husqvarna and Shind Iowa, uh, warranty secure. What, they're, what guys that are running tons of two-stroke engines like landscapers, they're, uh, they really like this stuff because they're burning a lot less oil. I mean, it's only half as much when you're running 100 to one. Now, do you want to do that? <laughs> yes, that's your personal call, uh, but um, I still run 50 to one. You know, I mean, it's, um, it's you're not super expensive, and, uh, but this is a premium, premium oil. But here's the case, if you do, were running Sabre, let's say for example, and you did, uh, you, you did get distracted and only put uh, half enough uh, for your five gallon can, you'd be covered. So, you know, take it for what it's worth there. You have to, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but uh, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. It's a pretty blue color and it's synthetic. This is really premium oil. Now, when you're mixing your two stroke, always uh, pour your oil into an empty can and, uh, and then, uh, and then you, uh, put your fuel in. I've had several guys asking what I think of that pre-mixed uh, fuel you get now at like the saw shops. I've used it on some fires. I think it's great <laughs> if, if someone else is paying for it, but it's, it's awfully expensive. Phasing out all the plastic cans. I've got a whole bunch of plastic cans. Uh, I'm going to give those to Brian. He doesn't have a, a lot of cans for storage, so he's, he's going to take them off there. And then we'll have uh, all, the, all steel cans from this point on out. Now, of course, non-ethanol fuel, uh, if you um, have access to it, uh, if, buy premium, if nothing else. A lot of premium has either low ethanol or no ethanol. Unfortunately, we got a couple gas stations here that have really high-grade non-ethanol fuel. It'll last a lot longer. I'm not gonna stabilize this because I go through so much two-stroke oil uh, or, or two-stroke gas uh, in gen that I, it, it won't, I won't have it for a year. So. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not gonna stabilize it if it's gonna be less than a year if I run good quality gas.
Well, that's one more step in the right direction. Man, getting that fuel so sorted out, that's, that's gonna feel really good is to have all that fuel, gas and diesel and kerosene, everything on hand. If a, we have a major storm and a dozen or so trees fall across the road, you know, I can call local guys, my buddies, and we've got 10 gallons of saw gas uh, ready to go at a moment's notice. That's why you wanna keep your, your power saws and things ready. Um, who, you could have trees down across the road and one of the older folks could have a, a heart attack, you know, so you can't always rely upon um, someone else to take care of or, or help solve these problems. Um, it's up to us, especially those of us who live in the country. So I wanted to share, I, I received a very special package from one of my subscribers, Steve. Uh, and Steve, I'm gonna paraphrase here. Uh, Steve has been married for 50 years. Uh, he says that um, his relationship with his wife uh, reads a lot like Manly Manners, that they've read it through several times. Um, and that they are blissfully married. And he gives us uh, some advice right here, and it kind of, the, to summarize what his letter says, is, is it's, he's touching on cleanliness is next to godliness, right? Well, that's not in the Bible, as Steve points out here, and, and I know that, and all good people of the book will know that too, but I didn't know where that came from, and he writes here that it was from a sermon by a Methodist pre a minister called John Wesley. Uh, and I have heard of John Wesley before, but uh, he says that um, cleanliness is next to godliness, and one of the keys to his success of being blissfully married for 50 years um, is to not go into the house and uh, with uh, sawdust all over him and, and dirt all over him and rough hands and, and bringing all that filth and dirt into, it, <laughs> into the house for his wife. And it, it, he sent me this lovely package that I wanted to share with you, so I'll save the best for last year, but he sent... Um, he sent some hand cleaner, some hand cleaner here, and some uh, some hemp. <laughs> I'll tell you. Let me tell you a funny story about hemp. Sorry, Steve. I'll, I'm going to finish up here. So we've got some guys uh, down the road who all of a sudden got really active uh, in cultivating their land. They had, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 acres or so. And man, they were, the whole family, they were working out there like crazy, planting and putting in irrigation. And we would drive by every couple days and like, what in the world are they doing? Because they hadn't done anything since we've been here. All of a sudden, we, we drove down and there's a whole bunch of plants that look, well, very, very similar to marijuana plants or pot plants. And I thought, good grief, what? <laughs> They're not even fenced in, you know, this crummy fence around there. Uh, and then uh, the neighbors were all starting to talk, like, are they, are they growing pot here? Well, you know, what, what's going on here? And there must have been a lot of questions because spray painted on these two huge, uh, they spray painted these signs that said, that said, like, hemp or something, hemp farm. That's what it was, hemp farm. And I was a little suspicious because I don't know, I don't know what a bushel of hemp sells for, but the amount of effort and time that went into this, and as frantic as they were to get this thing planted, I just couldn't see putting that amount of money and work into hemp. So I went online and I found out what a bushel of hemp costs, and I did a little, little deduction on, on what type of a profit that these neighbors might be looking at making. Um, and I came to the conclusion, and I don't have any proof, that uh, perhaps it was not hemp. Well, my suspicions were, uh, well, two weeks ago, uh, apparently, these, and these things were growing like weeds. I mean, they started small, and now they're like six feet tall, and I never stopped to really inspect them. But I did notice that right before harvest time, uh, the whole family, were, they were spending the nights in their little pup tents out in the field. <laughs> do you do that? Do you, is industrial hemp such a, a hot commodity where you have to worry about your neighbors coming and stealing everything right before the harvest? Well... I'm not convinced. Anyway, so we have, some, we have some, we've got some um, some hemp hemp. Oh man, I can't see anything. My eyes are just are just getting worse and worse. We've got some some uh, hardworking hand protective made out of hemp, and of course we've got the the hand cleaner. This is what Granddad used to use as stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, but I thought what was charming. He also said, "Don't go into the house um, with grease and grime under your fingernails." And he said, uh, "So I got this little package here. Let's open this together." I started opening it and I thought, wait a minute, we need to look at this together. Pretty cool packaging though, cardboard. That's what's inside here. We got a really, really cool little neck knife. So this, and I was warned that this is sharp, so I will be careful. This is a cute little knife right there. A brevis. 
That's a cute little knife, isn't it? Fits in this little sheath here. So he said that before you go in, one of the keys to his success will be for being married for, uh, well, it doesn't fit tight in the sheath though. That's not very good, is it? Am I missing something? What am I doing wrong here? I just didn't make the sheath right. I might have to heat that up. I can heat that up in the oven. That's a nice thing about Kydex and put a little pinch on it and get that to bind in there. But anyway, the knife was for to uh, it, uh, clean all the grease and the grime out from underneath your fingernails so that you shouldn't be going in and, and touching your honey uh, with dirty, rough hands. Um, and that was one of the keys to his success for being, um, of being married for, uh, for 50 years. So again, when a guy... Uh, gives you advice on how to stay married for 50 years blissfully, got, you know, you should stay, stand up and take notice because I'm willing to bet that uh, the great majority of us have not been married successfully for 50 years. Some of us have probably didn't get it right on the first, second, maybe the third try. So go inside with clean hands, dust off your, uh, the sawdust uh, before you drag it into your house. I know my granddad, when he came home, he worked as a mechanic just like clockwork. He would come in the garage, uh, he would sit down on the stoop there, and he would take off his work shoes and put on his house shoes and go in and, uh, and uh, take a shower and clean up every night before supper. And I am definitely guilty of not doing that um, sometimes. Uh, well, it's a, good, it's a good reminder. Thanks, Steve, for the nice package and uh, for that neck knife. That was very generous of you. And that's about it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Tomorrow we're going to be doing firewood. I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to try together a very new and interesting way of cutting kindling to see if it stacks up to the old-fashioned method. And, well, more to come. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video.